Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is a, uh, oh, did we start? Are we on? We are on. Okay, now I'll call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock. It's a Norton Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, April 13, 2022. We have several items on the agenda. The meeting is being held, again, uh, by way of hybrid means, meaning uh, we're meeting here at the Norton Media Center in person. But for anybody who uh, could not or chose not to uh, be here because of COVID-19 or any other reason, uh, we provided remote access by way of the internet uh, on our published agenda and also uh, there are uh, phone numbers there as well. So let's get started. The first item on the agenda is property address of 20 Acre Road. The applicant is listed as Jeremy Ballerino. Who is presenting that application tonight? I'm Jeremy. You're Jeremy, okay, thank you. Uh, the uh, members on this are gonna be uh, me, uh, Tom Noel, uh, David Wren, and Jim Tenori will be the uh, three voting members, the uh, uh, so-called regular members. Uh, Lucas is the alternate who will be uh, filling in um, on at least one of the matters uh, later on. This is a um, single family home, deck to be removed, new addition and deck to be added. Lot coverage is uh, over the uh, maximum of 16% projected. That's what the application states. Uh, applicant is looking for a variance. This is an R60 zone. Applicant, the application states it increases the lot coverage by 1% over the allowed maximum. Uh, a, the lot is a pre-existing non-conforming use. Uh, I, I have some questions, but members, uh, please jump in as you do uh, as well. Uh, to the applicant, I don't see where uh, we can derive the uh, square footage of the construction that's there now. The map that we have doesn't have the house dimensions, at least as I can see, or the uh, existing coverage, the existing garage or any of that. Uh, members, I suppose the application is asking for a hike to 17% maximum coverage. We can, we can do that without knowing the actual square footage that's covered now and, and what's going to be covered later, but to the applicant, when the inspection is done, the final inspection, if it's, if it's more than 17%, the applicant's going to be stuck uh, coming back. Mr. Iafredi's here. Uh, right. Knows what I'm getting at. So just to the applicant, we don't have the dimensions that will show us on the plan how big the house is now and how big it's going to be. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I realize that you or your engineer says they need an extra 1%. We can do that. Are you confident that it's no more than 17% coverage uh, as intended on the uh, plan? Yes, sir, I am. I understand completely what you mean. It doesn't show the dimensions of the existing house. It does show the proposed four season porch, with the deck off of the porch. Um, I could easily have that done for you, uh, but I understand uh, what you are saying. Is it proposed, the new deck, is that 20 plus 15 long? Uh, no, sir. Um, the new proposed four season porch yeah. is 16 by 15, and the new deck off of the porch is 16 okay. by 20. So it's a oh. four season porch taking the place of an existing uh, screened in porch that already has a roof on it. Um, okay. The uh, homeowner is not here. She's had some health issues uh, going last uh, about with uh, appointment with, for chemotherapy today. So I'm, I'm you know, speaking on her behalf. So the, um, the existing construction, if there's already a 15 by 16 foot bump out there. No, sir. It's only it's about 10 by 12. It's the small square that's inside the. Uh, I think I see the it. square with the X. I think I see it. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And 
Members, it's going to be on. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so the porch is going to be full season, four seasons, going to be on footings. Um, and with the plans for a slab underneath. Well, I, think, um, I think the whole thing gets measured in, for square footage and uh, building commissioner, building inspectors here. Correct. Um, so. I think you've answered, my question was, is it 20 plus 15? And it sounds like for lots more coverage it is. And all I'm saying is, we can't see the total square footage here. If you're comfortable with that, and I'll, I'll ask other members if, if they're comfortable on that basis too, or you want the applicant to come in with a plan showing the exact dimensions of the house where you, know, you can look at coverage. It's up to it's up to uh, the applicant, and I'll throw it out to the other members of the board. Knowing that Mr. Iafredi later does a, an inspection, and if it's 18, 19 percent, the applicant's going to have to come back again. Yes. Um, I think it's fine. I'm not going on it, but it's yeah. reasonable. It's nothing crazy. Yeah, I would, I would get, I'd feel the same way. And I'm not I'm not bothered by the extra percentage no. either. I'm just saying, you know, the, the decision's going to say no if more than. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, if the applicant's yeah. comfortable, we could proceed on that uh, basis. I just, just take another Go ahead. Comment. I just did my math there. Just, right. and, uh, so 20 by 16 is like 3 to 20 square feet. So we're adding 3 to 20, which a uh, 19,200 oh. square foot lot, and you're adding 1.6%. So well, I just wanna, there's something already there, though. Oh. So I don't write it. I would not add it. No, Dave is right. So it's the 20 by 16, and then that, that other square is probably 20%. Right. Added to the other. So, so in total, so it's 35. It's no more than 2% at the end of the day. Right. right. I'm just saying we're going from 16. So we're already at 16. You had one and a half. You're 17 and a half. And which I'm not necessarily yeah, opposed to either. I'm just saying. I don't want to get to the end and then play right. the over. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I understand. Yes. I can. Uh, Exterior deck. Easily have the engineer put the dimensions on. I, no, I think I'm hearing the members are feeling that that's necessary okay. here, considering what's there now. So are you, the application is for 1%, but then actually it mentions down at the um, elsewhere in the description, it does say 1 to 2%, I think. Yeah. To what standards are you seeking relief? We need one to two percent of lot coverage relief. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so he said the feeling of the board, two percent. I mean, usually we go by exact measurements. In this case, because it's already there, uh, if the board is comfortable, you know, going to. In the next area, it's not a habitable space inside the house. Yep. I think it's a different situation. And lot score coverage. Some, I have a feeling it slips by us often. Because it's not always calculated when builders come in with plans. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sometimes we'll, you know, I'll look to see if it looks outside of but uh, uh, I think it gets biased. Um, okay, are there other questions for the applicant? I don't know. Okay. Uh, let me ask if there's anybody else to speak in favor of the application or in opposition to the application. Seeing none, not online, I assume. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, Excuse me. Sorry, yes, sir. Can you identify yourself? Well, actually, um, I, I just wanted to say it's very hard to get the board. I, I don't know if there's something wrong with the audio. I'll check with my supervisor. He's right on the other side. Okay, where is the microphone? Right here. Use that four. I'm using it for the select board meeting. Did you want to ask, uh, sir, did you want to ask a question specific to this application? No, I just wanted to share that for, for the viewers on the other side of the Zoom that we, it's very difficult to hear you. Thank you. Uh, what is your name? Is it Mr. Costa? Yes, it is. I apologize. Yes, it's uh, Matthew Costa. Okay, thank you. I, and I don't know if the other viewers have the same issue, but I, I, I think that might be the case. All right, thank you. The microphone's right in front of me, but we'll try to find out. We'll speak up. Yeah. Uh, is there a motion uh, for approval 
uh, variance relief up to, but no more than, 18% lot coverage as shown on the plan of record. I'll make that motion. I will second. Is there any further discussion on this motion? I don't see any issue with this either for the reasons we talked about. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll ask for a roll call vote, Mr. Pinoy. Yes. Mr. Rett? Yes. Uh, Mr. Noel votes yes as well. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll write up a decision and get it posted as soon as we can. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you more. Good, Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda for 705 is the continued public hearing for 182 South Washington Street, the applicant, McDonough Family Limited Partnership. We had uh, started a public hearing back in, I think, February. Uh, then we skipped over March. Uh, so this is a continuation of the uh, hearing. Started back in February. Applicant seeks to construct a 100-foot lattice tower Town bylaw only allows monopole towers up to 125 feet. And uh, here to uh, represent the applicant is? Hi, I'm attorney Henry Sousa, Jr. Thank and you. good evening, Mr. Noel. And what members? For the record, for the record, I sent Mr. Sousa after our last meeting because we had looked at the uh, WCF rules, uh, wireless Communications facilities. Thank you. Communications facilities, WCF. We hadn't looked at that in a couple of, uh, I don't think a couple of years, maybe a year and a half. And when I went back and looked at the, uh, the bylaws, I had some questions, one of which I remember uh, being the fall zone had to be uh, shown on the plan. And so I went back at the uh, uh, bylaws and uh, actually sent Mr. Sousa a letter, which is uh, in the file, uh, simply asking him to uh, go through the bylaws and uh, if he felt appropriate, send in uh, an updated plan set that would show at least that and, and also anything else that the, the bylaws call for. I, I have, have extra that. copies with me, Mr. Noel, in case any of the board members need one. Could I like to do just that? And is there anybody else in the uh, audience who wants to uh, Thank you. get a copy of this? It's an amended plan over uh, what was distributed uh, two months ago. Actually, it's an additional sheet. Uh, oh, okay. The, the, our engineer, uh, frankly, uh, missed the requirement of uh, uh, submitting that plan that you correctly pointed out. And uh, he corrected the deficiency by adding an extra sheet. And uh, in the process of doing this, um, you can see projected on there are, are, are actually uh, three different fall zones depending on three different tower heights. And um, we realized uh, when I received a copy of this plan, now realized that there was uh, uh, a complication. The complication being that the fall zone the, the residential use on our own property as well as the neighboring properties becomes involved. Yeah. And uh, we read the zoning bylaw as saying that there is a distinction between residential zoned lot, which has a 300 foot setback, versus a residential use. And residential use obviously here is affected by the fall zone. Um, we need to ask you for a third variance. And I will defer to Mr. Noel on, and the board on this, but um, do you think that we need to withdraw this application and resubmit asking for three variances or are you capable of dealing with an oral request yeah. to do that. Just for the record, the plan sheet that I'm looking at is C01, and the last date on it is March 23. Boy, the light here is terrible. 25, 325. 
my copy better than yours? No, it's okay. It's dark in here. My eyes are very... Apparently, I'm the only old guy here. No, you're not the only guy. No, the only guy here. I can only see the pictures. Uh, <laughs> I can't read any. I can't, I can't read any. <laughs> the date. What, what sheet? March what March sheet? March. Yeah, no, I got yeah. it. I've got it. Um, for the record, that's what I was looking at, and you can see the the drop zone or the fall zones, um, the circles, concentric circles there. But um, in looking at this, um, I came up with the same uh, problem that uh, the bylaw talks about residential uses and residential structures, and it's a little bit complex. Well, isn't it residential lot, Mr. Noel, versus a residential use? I'm going to get it out. Because the property here is zoned industrial. Yeah. The whole area is now zoned industrial. So the residences that exist here are pre-existing non-conforming uses. And yes, they still are a residential use. And, you know, nobody's denying that. But they're no longer residential lots. So 175-17.4 uh, is dimensional uh, requirements. Within that, subsection B, height requirement. Mm -hmm. And within that is uh, subsection <coughs> C, I'm sorry, it's 175.17.4 C, setback requirements. <coughs> Number two, the setback of a freestanding WCF from a residential structure or property line of the lot on which it is located shall be at least equal to the height of the structure plus 20 feet. The setback of any such facility shall be a minimum of 300 feet from a residential lot line. Now, that I question whether there is a residential lot line here because this is an industrial zone. However, the first part of that, the first sentence of that, I think is pretty clear. Residential structure. Residential structure. Uh, so height plus 20 feet. And we don't disagree with no, no. your interpretation. Just hold on one second. First sentence. Hold sorry. on one second. I didn't need to interrupt. That's okay. Uh, so that the fall lines make this impossible unless the tower is something like uh, something far less than even 120 feet, because it falls off of the parcel. I mean, the fall line is off of the parcel, and the fall line, uh, the medium. Uh, and the outer fall lines involve several structures. And I, uh, the tax rolls for the town show that the structures to the left and to the right of the parcel are residential uses, the pre existing. Agreed. Agreed. And the structure on the parcel itself now is used as residential, correct? Yes, but that residential use will be terminated. That's what I thought you had said before. That residential use will be terminated, okay. yes. But there are residential uses uh, within the fall zone, despite the termination of the use on 182. I have a problem. I have a problem with that. I'm not sure that I would vote to approve this. The bylaw is very clear. There are safety issues, obviously. And I realize the neighbors and I will ask in a minute if the neighbors are here or you know, want to be heard. But regardless of whether they were to object, I would have a problem uh, for a communications facility. Uh, the standard fall line falls on other property, intersects other property uh, that is used for residential purposes, at least as of now. I'm not sure I would be in favor of granting this period uh, after reading the, uh, the bylaws more uh, deeply and looking at this. It was hard to look at the distances before, so I'm glad we asked for this addition. But I'd like to 
ask other members how they feel about this issue generally. There are other issues as well that I could point out, but how do you how do you see this? Mr. Chairman, to yes, go ahead. the board a couple of pieces of information you sure can. about our specific request. Um, the fall zones that are outlined here are predicated, or are outlined in zoning bylaw, I should say. They're predicated on a monopole tower. The decision was made if you, if, if you were here during the adoption of the wireless communication facility portion of the zoning bylaw. It was really all about aesthetics and, of course, safety. Um, the presumption that's made is that a monopole tower is somehow going to collapse at the base and it is going to fall and extend its full length. And there really are no instances of that ever happening. I can tell you we did find a recent instance where there was uh, a, uh, I guess, a, I, I want to say almost a self-destruction of a monopole tower uh, in this country. It was struck by lightning and the lightning caused an internal fire and the monopole acted as a chimney and it basically had meltdown. But we're proposing a lattice tower and the proposal for the lattice tower is, is for a couple of reasons. Do you remember when I first discussed this with you, I explained to you that what we're proposing here is not strictly a study of the telephone tower. It is for microwave communications as well as cellular communications. And that the microwave communications require a, the stability, if you will, of a lattice tower. That being said, lattice towers are inherently safer than monopoles. And there is no record, I am told, of any lattice tower ever collapsing in this country with the exception of extremely tall uh, towers for radio and TV transmission. One collapse, one collapse in Needham. We are years guy, what, the guy wire there. Yes. Correct. Those very tall towers, what happens is the tower fails if the guy wire fails. There's, there's no guy wires involved here. It's not nearly that tall. But Lattice towers are also designed differently than the monopoles. They're actually designed that if there is a failure, it goes up in sections and it's designed to collapse in sections upon itself. So while I know that you know the requirement of the zoning bylaw is there, we know it's safety, but I would submit to you that it is uh, an overabundance of caution, if you will, and that uh, you know one of the reasons that we've asked for the uh, extra height in the tower is for the microwave communications. Um, we, I'm sure you all remember hearing about how we're trying to help the town solve a communications problem that uh, the police and fire departments have in that area of town. The extra height is certainly there to benefit them, but it's also partially to comply if you look at a section in the zoning bylaw that also says that when you build one of these towers, you should build it large enough, tall enough, to accommodate as many users as possible so that there is not a proliferation of the towers. And this this, the height requirement we're looking at here is, is also speaking to that as well. So the type of tower, you know, it's microwave communications. The height is to service as many users as possible and also to provide uh, much better and improved communications in that part of town for the fire and police department. And uh, I, I think you know we made you aware that my client is committed to contributing a substantial amount of money here and to be a good corporate citizen, we're paying out of pocket for the communications equipment for the town if we get to build the tower. That's, that's just being a good citizen.
So we're, we're trying to create, I, I, I know we're asking for a lot from you, but I think when you consider the purpose of the zoning bylaw, what, what was the thought process in setting forth the requirements that are there, I think that you have, shall we say, a different animal in front of you, and that uh, I, I would ask you, Mr. Noel, to, to you know, consider all of the issues that are at play here, and to, to just, I, I have to say, I don't think we should take the height requirement at face value. I think you need to consider the type of tower that it's anticipated to apply. So there's one residential structure on your property? Right? Yes, there is. Right. You said that one is going to be? My client has told me that that residential use will be terminated. OK. There are three others, though, within that fall zone, correct? I think there's two others. Two? If I may, I have to put my glasses on to see these things. The one to the left is a residence. One, so 184 South Washington is the one to the right. Okay. And right on the street, right? Yep, and that. What you're looking at, the plan is that yep. the one on the right. Yep. Yep. That is. That property is in the process of being. Um, the structure that's in now is going to be demolished, and they're in the process of um, the beginning phase. I think a through planning board with a special permit for a commercial building, a metal commercial building. Okay. So so that, that's that's two residential uses. Hold on, please. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Ryan Freddy. No, I was just going to say, so the residential use will be gone on 184. There are two structures to the right of the property that, line. That's what I want to Maybe 186. Yeah. Yeah. Industrial lease. I could show you. It's one of the factors. Yeah. And I don't know if that's, I think that's actually <coughs> the property. I think the property actually is property. And then, 184, correct? Yes. Yes. Then I think, though, this is part of the next parcel, actually. I think the parcel goes in a horseshoe. Okay, that's the assessment now. Thank you. That's what I'm talking so about. This is, this is the property we're talking about. That's the house. That's the property we're talking about. That was 180. This is 182. This is the one. This is the application. Application for 182. This is the application right here. This, this one. Yeah. This is 182 South Washington. Yeah, it is. So this is your application. This is the residential house. Yeah. And this this structure here, I think he's still on the It's going to be demolished and converted into an industrial commercial building. This is a tenant back here right now. The map that submitted shows another structure to the rear of the first structure on the right. Right. You can see it as gray in there. It's actually in the there very you center of the structure. Thank you. I don't believe that to be another dwelling, though. It was my understanding that that was uh, a garage or storage building, and that the uh, building towards the front closest to the road was the residential use. Okay. But on the left. On the left, we still have a home, and that is going to stay a little, correct? As far as, as, far as, as we can, nothing. Well, it's a different owner. To find us the ground. And there's a house just to the left of that as well, which may be, it's hard to tell here, but the property line is, looks like it's right at the fall zone in any event for the second house or property line anyway. Now again, that's if residential lot line applies here. I think it does, even though it's an industrial zone because the whole purpose is to protect the residential use. I'm just saying that I'm, I'm still, with all due respect to the applicant, I'm not comfortable voting in favor of this project unless the applicant wants to present some evidence to us of the structural integrity of this design tower, which we have no basis to pass judgment on. I appreciate the comments that a lattice tower may be stronger than a monopole. Number one, the, the bylaws don't allow lattice. Right. It, they don't allow monopole, so that would be another variance. And maybe the bylaws have to be updated. I'm not disputing that or saying the bylaws are the Bible, but there are Bible for now. It says monopole, and it says fall lines on the plants, and the purpose is to protect residential uses. I'm just not comfortable at this point 
my suggestion is, I want to hear from other members, but my suggestion is if the applicant wants to pursue, we'll run it by town council for her opinion and ask the applicant to present some evidence on the structural integrity or some of the other things that uh, Mr. Susan's mentioned here tonight. Help. Go ahead, please. I mean, the evidence that was presented in our last meeting with the fire chief and police chief and how much we need it, I think it's, you know what I mean, that's compelling. Yeah. Um, so I would like, I would like to get to a resolution where we can support it. Um, but with that residential structure on the left, I, and with the bylaw, I mean, I, I would say we're not against the project. I just right. think this is the wrong property. And there's other properties in town that unfortunately, remember the last panel we went through and the amount of scrutiny we went through with that one and the studies, the yes. fall zone, and that was in the middle of the woods. I understand. That was, uh, not Harvey Street, but, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. But in any case, that, you know, that, I, yeah, it's a non-starter for me. I agree with you on the, with that residential. How can so, we permit it to encroach on the, the rights of the abutting residential owner? How could we ever, with a clear conscience, say, go ahead and put this up? I mean, if something, regardless of, whether anything happened, and the likelihood was very slim. That's just not it a, could. just it could. it's just not something that I'm comfortable doing on this record with this evidence. I, um, I would suggest I don't think there is a way to make this work unless the tower is you know, 60 feet or 70 feet, but that doesn't work obviously. It doesn't work. It's not, not with all due respect, it's not going to work for the town. Right? It's not going to work for the town, but I would not vote for this uh, on the state of the current record. Um, I would suggest. vote no, and I would suggest the applicant, if he wants to proceed with a vote, um, that's fine. If he wants to go to another hearing and get an opinion from town council as well as whatever he wants to supply, I'd, I'd be fine with that. I wouldn't mind doing that. Well, let's ask Mr. Sousa if he would, right. if he's willing to do that. Have you solicited an opinion from town council? <coughs> Absolutely. And, and I would ask for whatever evidence you have that the lattice certainly, tower is certainly you try to assemble persuasive evidence to convince you that this is not a safety issue. Um, my question to you is this is looking like a request for a third variance. And is the board comfortable with entertaining three variances based upon the application that was submitted? Yes. You are. That's not a problem. We adjust as we need to. That's if fine. the application is properly presented in good faith as this is. I mean, I, we, we received hand-drawn applications before. And that, that's when we start saying, uh, you know, you got away with this. But Mr. Noel, you've known me for many years yes, now. I, and you know that I like to do things correct yeah. the first time. If the board's comfortable, I am as well. My client I know has absolutely no problem with continuing this to another meeting. If you were to give an opinion of town council, I know that would make you feel better and uh, it may or may not make my client feel better. Uh, but what we can do uh, in the interim is to gather that evidence of the, uh, the, the strength of uh, lattice towers, if you will. And uh, I will ask my client's engineer to take a very careful look at the actual location of the uh, tower base on right. Right. our property, knowing that we have one adjacent property that is going to be converted to commercial use. Perhaps, I, I don't know, I'm not the surveyor or the engineer, but perhaps uh, some adjustment of the actual base location yep. might give us uh, some comfort. Perhaps also if we adjust uh, you know, the height of the tower. I mean, I do, we just know if you, if you remember looking at those different heights and, and how 
with the increasing height, the area lit up, so to speak, in terms of the coverage. I mean, we if, at a lesser height, we can provide some coverage, but the optimum coverage is a top. Yeah, I, I understand it. The engineering is pretty intricate in this. Uh, the last one we did, in fact, I remember adjusting the height needs and doing a different engineering study. We had the engineer in front of us, remember, he actually did overlays. Here's what it would be. Um, and I do know that the tower is to the rear of the property, but not as close to the rear or sideline as it could be because the other, it has to be dimensionally far enough you know, to a rear. To, there is a rear setback and a side setback for these things too. So that may be an adjustment that the applicant wants to make. I'm comfortable then um, seeing if we could get town council involved, seeing if she could either attend or give us an opinion, and also seeing if Mr. Sousa can, uh, <coughs> sorry, some other information for us. We'll certainly do our best, and you know, hopefully town council will understand that we're trying to uh, address uh, not only our own needs, but the communities as well. And yeah, we appreciate that, believe me. Uh, we don't have another hearing date. I thought we did in May, but let's uh, choose a date right now. <clears throat> it won't recognize me with my. pick a June date as well, so we have May 11 for our next meeting anyway. We can, we can continue it to May 11 and see I'm, where we get. I'm available on the 11th. And then in June, <coughs> June 15th is right in the middle of the month. Is that okay? Uh, uh, <clears throat> that's okay. Yeah, June 15th for us. We can see if uh, we can make a point of the 11th, if we know ahead of time or not, we'll just inform uh, council, you know, that we're going to roll it to June and do it that way uh, informally. But since everybody seems to want to know more about this, I would encourage we continue it to May 11th. Is there, is there such a motion? Actually, of course. Is there anybody else here to speak in favor of or in opposition to this application? Yes, sir. Can you identify okay. yourself? Yeah, I just have a little educational background. Can you identify yourself? Uh, Greg Vincent, 23 Reservoir Street. Thank you. Uh, I'm part owner of a company called Communication Design Associates. It's a consulting firm. But in life's past, you know, I've put up close to 45 television stations and 90 radio stations throughout this country. And one of the issues I didn't hear anybody bringing up is the light beam, the strobe, you know, coverage, operating hours, so people don't have a flashing light in their bedrooms all night long. Uh, proximity to Mansfield Airport, you may want to look at. Did, when we did WPRI, the studios, in, in, off of Route 6 there, we had to put up a microwave because to go from the studio to the tower, broadcast tower, we need to line of sight, you got a microphone. Yeah. The higher you get, you got a line of sight, uninterrupted. Well, we ran into issues with the neighbors because we had to put the antenna on top of a four-story building and go up. And then we got apartments to deal with in the beacon. <laughs> so just little things to think about. Thank you. Right, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I think we had asked about the airport, proximity to the airport. We actually discussed both of those issues at the last meeting that uh, oh, I attended. We ever meet. But the airport didn't require to work far enough. No, it, it's it's short enough and out of the flight path to Mansfield Airport. There will be no beacon, even if, even if it's 190 feet tall, 
there, there will be no rebound. And uh, the, the second thing is the, uh, it's just how the fight is going to be. Okay. That was, that was looked at and discussed. That's what I thought. I would, you know, since you brought that up, but if we do it, if you end up trying to move that base, can we just make sure it isn't moving? If we do end up moving it, if we still are okay with the base payload? I think we I, are, I, but I just I I think we want are, to make sure. I, I would love to have <laughs> that much room to move it. I, I don't think I don't think you can move it. I don't it think far, we can move it that far. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm just saying. So I'd like to ask this gentleman with all these towers that he worked on, how many of them ever fell down? We can ask that, that that's, but I'm not going to make this joke. How many falls down? <laughs> Any fall down in your experience? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so you never want to ask the question. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, there, yeah, there, there are bigger towers, I'll give them credit on that. <laughs> Did they have guy wires? Uh, oh, yeah, you, you, 1,500, 1,800. Yeah. Oh, that goes that high. Television, Television transmission. Yeah. No, thank you very much, yeah, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Susan. Go ahead. Further yeah, discussion or questions? I, or? I just want to clarify. So there's three yep. variants. Right. Height. The lattice tower. The type. The lattice tower versus monopole. The first being the height. The height. And, you know, we're, we're looking to maximize the height here. I think the request you have without my opening <coughs> file, I think it's 190 feet, right. was the maximum requested. Yes. And that was the lattice is because of microwave communications. The height is to gain line of sight with the uh, uh, communications for Norton, where I think we, we discussed where the line of sight would be and that uh, the microwave uh, uh, would be a direct line of sight with the, the center of uh, water tower uh, uh, array. In the center tower. And uh, yeah, the last is the, the last proximity to residential. The last is the proximity to residential. Those are the three. So I, I know, I, I just from reading the, the guidelines, uh -huh. it, so it, it's pretty clear. I, I assume this has three or more legs, the lattice tower. Three legs, I believe. Three legs. You, sh you should have uh, a plan there showing the number of legs. Uh, so the only reason I bring that up was my reading is that the construction, uh, well, we're, we're, not, we're, not the, we're not the special permit. No, you're not. No. I need to get the variances from you gentlemen, hopefully, in order to ask the planning board to issue a special permit. And when they, hopefully, hopefully if I can convince you, when they say, well, we can't do this because, I'm gonna say, well, wait a second. I have variances for those issues. You can't. That's why I began here, rather than going to the planning board first. Is there a motion to continue to May 11th at, say, we say 705 just in case there are other routine applications before we can squeeze in. Yeah, I was thinking actually distributing it later on because that this is a long time. Yeah. Yes, it could. I'm just saying, but if, yeah. if we don't have any other applications, then we all yeah. have to be waiting until 715 or 20. Yeah. Seven, right. Say 710, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. I will make the motion for, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. I'll go with Motion for 7:05 p.m. continuing to May May 11th. I'll second. And, and no, any further discussion on that motion? No. Then we will come back. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Genore. Yes. Mr. Red. Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes. We have to do roll call votes when we are partially remote. Uh, okay. We'll see you. We'll communicate before then to see where we're getting both sides, both of us. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very and, much. And thank you for your time and uh, in, in indulging uh, the uh, twists and turns that we've encountered here. I, will be no I didn't anticipate that it would be uh, as complex when I started. Thank you. If we see if we put to 705, if we have three other applications that come in, routine app, we could say 7, 701, 702, and just you know inform the applicant, this applicant that well we're not going to get to you until 730. Just kind of take anything ahead of the post of time. Okay. Next item on the agenda is. <clears throat>
9 Newbury Street. Uh, Matt Costa is uh, presenting, and Mr. Costa is remote. Mr. Costa, can you hear? We, we really can't hear you. And, um, uh, oh, so I'll, I'll introduce myself, uh, Matthew Costa. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We, we can hear you fine. Uh, can I ask the camera, per, is there a microphone on the camera perhaps that's being picked up? I mean, it's, that's just not attached to the computer at all. Everything that's attached is with that. Generally, we have four. You move your papers, papers off the microphone there? This is the microphone here. I'm sorry, Mr. Costa, I'm going to ask you, uh, it's, it's, it's either working or it's not. You know, there's some level that's not. Uh, Volume is maxed out on the Chromebook as well, but it is attached to the USB. Do you hear us at all? Can, sorry. Yeah, Can you hear this any better when I'm right at the microphone? I don't think so. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a little louder, but it's still it's fuzzy. Yeah. So I, it's I, a kind of thing. Uh, okay, uh, let me uh, introduce this anyway. Nine Newbury Street. Mr. Costa is an attorney representing the applicant. There's Would you like me to introduce myself and make a presentation? Yes, actually, yes, yes. Okay. All right. So just for the record, I, I'd like to say that uh, for us on Zoom, we, we really can't hear the board. Um, during the last presentation, I contacted my client to see if it was just me. He had the same experience, and there's been a uh, in the chat. I think that it's a, this is a shared uh, thing amongst all of us on Zoom. So I just want to put it out there that uh, we we can't hear the board, so I'll just do myself my best to make the presentation, and um, I'll hopefully I'll be able to hear you if you have questions. Uh, so uh, my name is Matthew Costa. I'm an attorney with an office at 73 Washington Street, and I represent the owner of Nine Newberry Street. Messiah's Vasquez and Sellos. Um, this is a petition to alter a pre existing non conforming use. The property at 9 Newbury Street is in an R40 zone district, uh, but the pre existing non conforming use of that property is as uh, manufacturing. Uh, so uh, the use of the property has been by a uh, fine edge tool and stamping. Uh, Mr. Van Asconcellos is the owner of that business. Uh, they do uh, uh, they do they do uh, tools and uh, stamping. It's kind of being, uh, manufacturing. The census had classified it as a factory, and it, essentially that's what it is. It's a small factory building. Um, and so the present uh, proposal is to modify that manufacturing use. It's not to abandon it, but it's to, it's to modify it. Uh, the proposal is for a uh, plumbing and HVAC business, uh, Burke uh, Plumbing and Heating, to take over the use of this site. Uh, they do engage in manufacturing, so it's very important that the manufacturing use uh, remains uh, allowed uh, the proposal is, is to modify that. Uh, Burke Plain and Heating is a small family owned business. Uh, uh, James Burke is on Zoom, he's the owner of the company. Uh, they provide uh, plumbing and, and heating HVAC uh, services in Oregon and surrounding uh, towns. They have six employees, uh, including the owner. They have uh, two employees that work in the office and four uh, others who work as technicians. Uh, they've been in business for 22 years. 
Uh, in terms of uh, vehicles uh, coming in and out of the property, uh, it's important to point out that the uh, employees take the vehicles home so they're not garaged on site uh, in general. And um, I witnessed that today when I went, I went by the site uh, after hours and went over vehicles uh, parked uh, in the uh, front of the building. Um, so the proposed use of Dunnebury is basically it's the office for, uh, for plumbing and heating is, is, is that's where the office will be. Uh, they have their equipment there. And they do do manufacturing, but it's just of a different nature than, than the manufacturing that happened before. Uh, so uh, fine edge tools um, had done some heavy uh, stamping um, uh, type work with um, uh, presses and things of that nature, kind of this typical, um, so, sometimes noisy manufacturing use. And Burke plumbing and heating, they do uh, some manufacturing uh, uh, processing uh, metals for hangers, uh, some welding, and they do uh, fabrication of the um, uh, uh, ventilation systems that they install at their jobs. So it's very important for them to still have that manufacturing. I want to take that here because of the way the, uh, you know, uh, the, the notice was worded. Uh, that's an alteration of the manufacturing, but not a complete change to a little bit. Um, in terms of uh, the property itself, there's no additions that proposed. It's an existing building. It's shown on the plan. Uh, the building itself is a little around 6,000 square feet. Um, it's a the the lot is about 13,100 square feet. It's kind of unique because uh, on the northerly and on the westerly and on a portion of the southerly side, so sort of as you look at the plan, sort of the, the left hand side of the front, it sort of has wetlands that go around that whole side of the building. And uh, there's, there's a residential water on one side, and this is a residence uh, across the street. It's in a residential district, and uh, the, most of the neighborhood is all residential. Uh, but this uh, building itself is clearly a um, factory type building. It's a manufacturing building. It's not the type of building that could be sort of changed to a residential use in form. Um, if, if any of the board members have, are familiar with the, with the property, it's, it's pretty apparent we go in there, you know, manufacturing type building. And so, um, just in terms of just how, how it fits in with the neighborhood, uh, you know, the standard for um, a change of a pre existing non conforming use is that it should be allowed if it's not more detrimental than the existing non conforming use. And we think that's pretty clear here. Uh, this is kind of probably a pretty normal type of change this day and age when the old fashioned small manufacturing type facilities have. You know, by and large, they sort of cease to exist. And so now we have a new, um, a new a user who's interested in modifying that manufacturing with you know a, a typical kind of a business that would occupy this type of site. Instead of sort of a, a plumbing HVAC business that does can its own factory machine yeah. and, Mr. Costa, can you manufacturing? Can you hear and us? One of the things I would point out is that. Uh, most of the supplies for this business, uh, they are picked up from supply houses, and so they don't have a lot of uh, deliveries um, of suppliers to the site. And that's a possibility. Mr. Costa? Uh, but uh, compared to the, the prior manufacturers, where there was sort of you know, 18 wheelers coming in, um, every now and again to either drop off or pick up. Uh, supplies of product. Mr. Costa? Uh, this is, is certainly going to be exactly. a lot more intrusive than really the old uh, uh, mini he does see it. So, what for those reasons, we're draw asking for a time that the proposal to modify the manufacturing use for Mr. Burke's business would be you know, less detrimental than the existing uh, use. And, uh, Mr. Costa? And it is allowed. Okay, uh, Mr. Costa, this is not going to work. 
And if they're speaking, I can't hear them. We're going to have to continue this. I have, I have questions. Can he call in? Can call do it on a phone conference. Yeah, but I mean, what does he get when he calls in? Does he get audio that he can hear? He can leave his video and just do an audio. That's what I'm <coughs> wondering. Um, can, can you hear me at all? Can you hear me at all? This isn't going to work. We're going to have to continue this with apologies. Uh, Brian, but, can you type to him in the chat so we can at least hear yeah, what exactly. see? know what everybody's saying? Can he call into the number on the agenda? Right here on a piece of paper. Which is, <laughs> I the numbers are here. What does he get when he calls the number? Who does he call? Who is he calling? Is he calling you or is he calling the North Media Center? Six four six five five eight. Five five eight 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 six five six. Yes. I can hear that. I couldn't hear what was, what was just being said, but I heard. I can hear that. Yes. Yeah. You can hear what? We're not. <laughs> we're not saying anything. Can you call in? It's, it's still garbled, though. He's not reading the text. We're going to have to continue this to May 11. We're not going to do this for another 20 minutes to hold everybody up there. Yeah, I understand. There's nothing we can do. We can't. Mr. Costa, can you hear that? Yeah, I'll try to plug you before, Jim. This is oh. this is can't. Uh, oh, he's reading the message right now. We got to do better than this. I'm going to try to colonize this on the message from the camera. So let's see what happens. Give it a minute. I, my apologies to those here in the room. Where is he going to tie it to? Right. And he's going to get the same microphone. Right. Well, I assume. If we brought that laptop to you, I can unplug it. That's my thing. That's why I asked if the mic was the camera was working. We unplugged the thing. No, no. Yeah. You unplugged it, plug it back in. We did. We did do that. Oh, we did it. I did hear it, but I didn't do it up there. So why did you do it up there? What are we doing here? All the biggest bit. You plug some boxes. It's going to be all right. Can the laptop come over here or not? Can you talk into the laptop and see if it's... Can you hear me, sir? He's not indicating yes. If you unplug it, it unplug the, the laptop. laptop. No. Yeah. It. We're connected to that Samsung yeah. Max remote right there. Yeah. And the volume is maxed out at this point. For so that. can you hear us, Mr. Costa, now? Well, I have to just you know, try it's using... Unplug the microphone from the from that. Can you unplug the mic cord? We might be able to. And, and then talk to him to see if he can hear us through the laptop. The problem is he won't be on the TV if I unplug this cord. Oh, it's not just audio? No, it's visual. Can you open up your mic for a second? Let's mute that and open up your mic. It has to be audio. We're going to mute my phone. Good stuff. It's talking to Brian's mic. Can you? Can you? Can you hear us now, Mr. Can you hear us now, Mr. Costa? We're going to kill it. Mr. Costa, we're going to have to continue this with apologies. We 
we've got to get it right for next time. It's got to be tested beforehand. Uh, I, I have a number of questions for Mr. Costa, and it's not going to work. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions. Yeah. And I bet this one will We're going to have to continue to May 11 uh, at 7 o'clock. <laughs> we'll yep. take this first. Yeah. Is there anybody here to, on this issue tonight? Yes. Yes? Yes. Apologies. We have oh, to come back May 11. <laughs> Whatever side you're on, we're going to ask people to come back May 11th, right at 7 o'clock. Uh, is there a motion to continue this matter to 7 o'clock on May 11th? I'll make a motion to continue this matter to 7 o'clock on May 11th. I will say. Mr. Red. Oh, yes. Mr. Tenore. Yes. Mr. Noel votes yes. Apologies to people assembled. Apologies to Mr. Costa. And to Mr. Burke, um, we've got to get it right next time. Um, and perhaps, do we have to have hybrid meetings still? Do we know? Are we free if we just note it as an in-person meeting? Is that kosher now, or do we know? I think it is actually. I think it's called for in-person. We can. We're going to find that out. Um, the hybrid meetings have worked well until until they didn't. Uh, let's find out if we can. If the next meeting should be just in person. Of course, it all depends what happens with the stupid COVID too. But okay, uh, let's move on to the next item on the agenda. We'll contact Mr. Costa off hours in the morning. I know he's an attorney. Mr. Costa, we'll tell him I will contact him tomorrow. To, uh, apologize. Um, Next item is the uh, application for variance for 36 Newland Street. <clears throat> this is in an R80 zone. Mr. and Ms. Rivera, who is present? Can you identify yourself for the record? Louis Rivera and Beverly You are the applicants. Yeah, you're the owner of the application. Okay. So this is an application for a variance uh, for apparently new construction at this location. The in-law apartment uh, that is planned is, uh, the applicant is limited by the uh, 700 square foot uh, uh, limit in 175-2.2. Uh, uh, accessory units shall not exceed 750 square feet of living area. Applicant is asking for a variance to go to 980. Correct. And plans have been submitted to us. Uh, is plan a single family home with an in law above the garage? Uh, I believe that this is a variance. This is eligible for variance relief. We, I believe, we have done it before, though I cannot remember when, and don't don't remember the dimensions, varying from the 750 square foot limit. Yeah, I think you have the ability as the board to, to grant relief on a on a larger in law if you'd like to. My my question, um, just looking at the plans and doing some simple math, which is always dangerous for me. Um, the in-law apartment is within the footprint of the main house, is it not? Correct. So it's not larger on no, top. No, it's not larger. It's actually, it's a little smaller than the, uh, than the, uh, than the garage. Because 980 is not a, a, a huge uh, uh, dimension, but when you start looking at the house that's planned, it's not, uh, it's hard to tell you know, exactly how it's going to look on top of the house. An applicant in law apartment is a separate accessory apartment. That is, you have a separate entrance for it. Correct. Uh, can I ask you the purpose of the in law apartment? For our daughter, our daughter and her husband. Okay. Just that this is our uh, retirement home, basically. We've been in Norton for 36 years. We've, we've lived in Reservoir Street, Arrow Road, and now we're moving to our hopefully forever home. So that's that's why we're uh, that's why we're here, Thank and uh, we would like our daughter to kind of be our guardian eventually. <laughs> yeah, because obviously a, uh, a, a 
sorry, an accessory unit is different. I used the word accessory a minute ago. Accessory unit is different than a, 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 an apartment. Uh, and the applicant is asking for the uh, apartment use uh, as a separate, separately accessed unit. Meaning there, it's a separate apartment with cooking and, uh, and the ability to cook, etc. Uh, questions from the board? Issues? Uh, some detailed plans were provided. Uh, on the drug department. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's uh, usually I think we've been faced with uh, fairly small increases over 750. It's when uh, I've, I remember seeing some 8 or 825. This one's a little bigger, but that was the purpose of my original question. It doesn't fit on top of the house without, it's got to keep, the, the bylaw says it has to be in character with the main unit. And that was the purpose of my question. Is this going to be, is it going to look like part of the house? Except that there'll be a staircase. So I'll make a comment. Yes. Footage, in my opinion. When you walk in, there's kind of like a common area right here at the staircase. And this is all before you even walk into the unit. So, and then there's a washer dryer here. So he's actually at like 720 square feet. If you counted all of this as common area. I guess it depends what you consider. That would, that would be considered part of the apartment because it's part of the entrance to the apartment. Oh, okay. So, That's right. the if board. there was a different egress out of that apartment, you may be able to make that argument, but okay. I would consider that part of the apartment. So. And I assume I assume that that was the limitation, Mr. I for the center. Said they would have to get variance relief. Right. This is a little bigger than I think we've dealt with over the past years that I can recall. But again, it's it's a new construction and uh, as long as it's not going to be uh, you know stick out as uh, something different from the main use uh, and the plans seem to uh, satisfy me to that effect uh, other comments or questions from the board I'll ask if anybody else is here to speak about it of course See none. is there anybody else here to speak in favor of or in opposition to the application as filed. For the record, none, and of course, if anyone's online, they can't hear me anyway. <laughs> 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 I, I will leave open you know, the um, Is there a motion then to uh, uh, permit this variance up to 980 square feet as shown on the plan of record uh, for the uh, in law apartment as, as depicted? I will make that motion. I'll second that motion. Uh, there's a motion that's been seconded. The, the various uh, strands, of course, are that it's not going to be, uh, that it's in keeping with the surrounding area, uh, that there is some uh, hardship involved. Uh, I would submit that making a, a unit for you know, one's uh, child uh, in this day and age is uh, a, a type of hardship that you can understand. Of course, that doesn't, doesn't limit uh, what happens with the accessory apartment uh, in a year or two. You don't have control over that, although I think the bylaw does state that the owner has to uh, certify to the town from time to time that conditions are being met. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Iafredi, do you have any further comment on this? Is it, it's in the discussion stage. Nope, I think to your last point, it's just that prior to occupancy permit, but it has to be a notifi notarized letter <clears throat> stating that the owner of the property will occupy one of the two dwelling units on the property. And, and I assume that's what the applicant has told us. That is in the bylaw, though, the certified letter delivered to uh, the uh, town inspector saying that you are occupying. <coughs> yeah, it's yeah. going to be us and our daughter. So that's, we, that's we, it. We, yeah, we've discussed it before. Yeah, well. yeah. Right. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, motions have been made and seconded. Uh, Mr. Rett, have you voted? 
I vote yes. Mr. Chinore? Yes. Mr. Naval votes yes. Okay, thank you and good luck to you. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We're going to have to be ready to collect. Thank you. <clears throat> So Mr. Costa has that uh, message. <coughs> I'll communicate with him um, later. One more item on the agenda. Sorry? <coughs> That's my throat. It's not a uh, illness or COVID. <laughs> no. no, I got a throat problem. Are you hoping for my demise down there? <laughs> no, we just <laughs> left. <laughs> this, this is being recorded. I, I know. I hope the mic works. No, can hear. Okay. <laughs> next is the application for 22 Reservoir Street. The applicant is uh, Dylan Rebuero, <coughs> and as I. Um, indicated by email on uh, Monday or yesterday after I looked at this. Uh, Mr. Rivero is my uh, next door neighbor, across the street neighbor, and I think it best for the appearance of, uh, to avoid the appearance of impropriety, to recuse myself. I'm going to ask Mr. Wazia to be the third voting member on this. I'm going to step back and uh, Ask Mr. Red or Mr. Tenore uh, <laughs> flip a coin as to who wants to share the piece. Oh, Mr. Red's so good at it. He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your understanding, and thank you for, to Mr. Rivera for your understanding. Absolutely. Can I ask a question? <coughs> it seems this is the second one I've been to, and I look online on the North thing, and I get to download the paperwork. But there are no drawings, there are no maps, and this is the second meeting I've had. Why are they not included? We come to these meetings and we have nothing to look at until it shows up on the screen. They're available in no, the they file. Aren't. They're not available for download? No. This is all that's available. The agenda. Yes. Thank you for, I understand what you're asking. And the same thing we did on the previous one on the other property on Reservoir Street. You there's, can, maps post, there's maps on the, on the road. You can have but, my. But you couldn't get anything online. I understand. You are welcome to take my uh, papers on this if you'd like. I don't want to take your own copy, but <laughs> I'm accusing myself anyway. But that's an interesting uh, aspect. I thought they were yeah, available. I thought, they, I thought you were able. To no. Those values is that not open to the public? You go and you get you get down you go download on. the meetings. Dropbox. It's not there. No drawings. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. I brought that up at the last meeting. Well, the master's he made on, 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 on the, the, the uh, January 20th. Wheaton property. Right. right. So right. Like to public cover no maps. See, it's yeah, in yeah. the public file at Town Hall. So it is available at Town Hall. I thought it was available electronically as well, but that's a good point. You can, you can. I haven't been able to locate it. No, at Town Hall, you can get it. Oh, yeah. Take a physical trip down yes. to Town Hall, as long as it's not Friday afternoon. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> that that and the microphone will work. Thursday night, middle seven thirty. Thursday evening. Thursday rules. Let's uh, let's okay. continue. It should, uh, it should be a lot more accessible than that. Yeah, no, I appreciate your comments, sir. And we'll, yeah. I'll, and, and, and you know, as take far that as, to heart. As far as any type of rezoning clause or anything like that, you know, it says you have to notify the voters. You have to send them. Motors or anything within 300 feet doesn't matter if it's across the street. Um, it's supposed to be in the newspaper. It's supposed to be posted at town hall. It it's is. supposed to be posted on the town website. It is. It's not. It's not on the website. It is posted and, on and the website. Some of us did not get any uh, sir, notification by mail. Okay. If you didn't get notification by mail, I think you should call uh, Mr. Carmichael yeah. tomorrow and discuss that. It, the agenda is on the website. Yeah. So you, that's you, the notice. You, you do get this in the mail. Yeah. Where's the map? No, if you'd like to see the documentation. The town doesn't it. mail out the map, yeah, no. so. That's, that's, you can request it. Yeah, you and can go to town hall at any time. That's just the way it's, uh, that's the way it works. Uh, but let's go down with this application. Oh, that, that, that needs to be <clears throat> changed. Thank you. I will, uh, I'll take that to heart, and I appreciate the comment. Uh, 
Can you continue with the uh, application for 22 version four? Thank you. So I'm gonna step back. That recover my, uh, what I can <laughs> All right. So, yeah. if anyone bear with me just for a second. All right, so this is public hearing for variance at property address of 22 Reservoir Street in 79 Mansfield Avenue. Um, I believe the, the variance is on 22 Reservoir Street. Well, the, it's two properties and they're combined into one. And let's see, the applicant is seeking a variance for frontage relief from 150 feet to 64.96 feet. All right, so I'll open the meeting. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Rivera, I assume you'll be dealing. Yeah. Uh, you want to maybe yeah, talk no. us through what the uh, yeah, absolutely. is for? Um, I'm Dylan Rivera, the owner of the property, along with my brother. Uh, we purchased this property back in November. I'm going to give you a quick recap of what transpired and why we're here today seeking this front experience. Um, when we were interested in the property, went down to the town hall and uh, asked the building department secretary, who do I see for uh, zoning determination? Uh, she said the building inspector, who was also the zoning enforcement officer. Uh, luckily, he was in. We walked down the hallway and we looked at the zoning map, which was in front of the assessor's office. And the parcels that we're talking about were on that map located in the village commercial district. So I requested uh, a formal uh, letter stating that this is what we have. I paid the town $250 for this uh, determination. A couple of days later, I have the letter. It's in village commercial. I said, great. Um, we were legally, with this determination, we were legally able to do four lots. For the fourth lot, we had a 5.5 acre of dry land that we had visions of doing a condo or apartment complex. With this being said, we valued the property at a certain price. Um, we made an offer, we bought the property. Right Fast forward to March. Um, I went to the building department um, to speak with Nick about something, and then we went over to see the town plan about a second project on an abutting property. And then I was informed that the property we just purchased was in fact not village commercial and was R60, which was a shock. Because um, we made a value on this property, they X amount of dollars <coughs> with the village commercial in mind. Now it's R60 which is far more stringent on all the dimension requirements. So we legally went from four lots with a nice 5.5 acre lot for some good development, and we got knocked down to three lots. Uh, this financial hardship was not anything to do with us. It solely fell on the town. Um, it was the inability to provide the correct map for the public and the department heads to use, and also the lack of communication between departments that put us in this situation. Um, this has nothing to do with us. This, this was the easiest way to ask for a variance to right or wrong. We will never see what we intended to do with the property. I understand that. I don't want to see the legal avenue to try to get it back to Village Commercial. That's gone. We said, hey, if we get a fourth lot, at least we're not going to lose money. So that's why we're here seeking the, the, the variance for the frontage um, and try to get that fourth lot. Where will the entrance be to the four lots? Will it be from one from Mansfield Ave or from Reservoir, or is it so? so right now, there's uh, an existing dwelling on Mansfield Ave. Yep. So that's lot number one. Reservoir Street has two, um, I'm, I'm sorry, okay. So this is this is Mansfield Ave, yeah, so that's lot four. These will be two, our 60 lots, and this is the other oh, way I'm proposing. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can you 
do that from that side so we can all see what it is you're pointing to? Okay, Reservoir Street. Okay, and this right here is the lot in question. The one with number three, and this would be the frontage right here. We met with Mr. Darrell Simpson and his wife and told him our situation. We got a letter from them stating, hey, we understand what happened to you guys and we are fully in favor of making it, make it right. Um, we felt they were the ones that are most impacted by this variance besides ourselves because they are surrounded by that lot three. Um, and like I said, we got the letter from them stating that uh, they were sympathetic to our situation. Yeah. So I'll, wait, I'll save my questions for later. Yeah. So if I'm going to say, currently there are two lots, correct? You want to subdivide it before, but they want to subdivide Cur Currently, there's, there's two lots that right. combined to. same thing, did our due diligence, came to town, went up and asked, how do I find out who owns the property across the street from me? So oh, you want to go upstairs to the assessor's office. Went upstairs to the assessor's office. Assessor looked it up, oh, it's map, 16 numbers, uh, I forget, whatever it is. And it's owned by Wheaton College and it's, it's, it's zoned R40. So it's zoned, great. Most of the bills across the street from me is houses. Wasn't the case, come to find out, when they wanted to rezone everything to Village Commercial, they told me that property was already commercial. I said, well, when did it become commercial? Unfortunately, your previous planning person was not very helpful at all, didn't want to help me at all. I spent hours going through town meeting from 19, from 2016 all the way back to 1996, trying to find out when that property was turned commercial. I finally had to put in a request through the state at the town look up when that to tell me when that property was made commercial and i have maps now full-scale maps Mr. Vincent, from the I, town Mr. Vincent, can I interrupt? yes um, we're, gonna, we're gonna have the questions first okay well i'm just saying that's where the that's where the 450 feet in but mr Robert was explaining the situation we were asking, from those maps we were asking questions and actually it's 350 to 450. But yeah, I feel for you. So, when, I, when I'm thinking it's about this, house, it's remote. when <laughs> you subdivide the property, you're creating the variance. It's a self created art, self created art. That's not just, you can't. So, that's the. That's my first reaction. Is we, we, we cannot we cannot grant. It's, it's, it's a self-created option. So I'm going to fight, but you subdividing me a lot, Jim. If I can. Yeah. So, like Dylan said, the, the, I was the one that wrote the zoning determination determination letter based off of the zoning map in the assessor's office and the zoning map that was in my office next to my desk was updated. Current one was never provided to either of those locations. Um, so, like Dylan said, he he purchased the property based off of his own determination letter that, that was written by me. I think that I may have caused some type of a hardship for him there as well. But what it's worth. Yeah, I, I'd, no, like I say, totally I'd like to say one other thing too. Um, the, the lack of communication, and not, I, I don't think it's it's Nick's fault. Um, I was told that this was known about for over a year. And this has nothing to do with Nick. It was someone else that told me we knew about this for over a year. So we kept that map up in the middle of town hall 
for over a year. And people didn't tell other department heads for over a year about the zoning issue. This is a serious problem. Um, yes, I understand I'm creating a hardship, but would the better thing to take you know, legal action against the town? Well, like, I don't know, $500,000 is a lot of money to make, maybe not to other people, but you know, when you empty certain accounts to do something, this has a financial snowball effect. It's, it's pretty serious. It's just not like, hey, I'm trying to get this law. This, this has bigger implications on than, than just trying to sneak another lot out of something. Can I ask a question? If, um, in my opinion, I see the hardship of 79 Mansfield Ave. That's correct. Yes, 79 Mansfield Ave. Because I'm actually on the geo map right now. And in all fairness, that property is zoned half a village commercial, half an R60. But every other property nearby, especially zero Mansfield Ave, I think on zero Mansfield Ave, right on the reservoir, goes, let's just say, 500 feet deep. And the entire property was encompassed in village commercial. But yet, and then across the street, every property, all, it, it, it kept within Village Commercial the entire property, except 79 Mansfield Ave. So I 100% agree that the town made a big mistake, and that 79 Mansfield Ave in its entirety, we'll ask questions after, 79 Mansfield Ave in its entirety should be considered Village Commercial. And I believe in that variance. It's 22 Reservoir, and 22 Reservoir, was that part of the deal, or that's, was that something that was, you just went and part that of that? That was part of the deal. That was a, it was a package deal on the two pieces. 22 Reservoir is a much more difficult discussion because that's entirely on 22 Reservoir. It's a separate property, and I think that that is. But 79 Mansfield, I, I do agree with the applicant and the hardship because I think the town made a very big mistake. Not encompassing that entire property, but yet every other. Well, last question that's the question. Um, so I do agree with the applicant on that. I will make that comment. 22 Reservoir, there is a case to say that's a self inflicted situation. Um, have there been any considerations if you could do a development within just 79 Mansfield? Uh, not right now. It just it just doesn't make sense to do it without sewer. Okay. This might be slightly off topic, but you know, I wasn't even just thinking until about right now. Did you have, I don't even know if this matters. I'm gonna ask you. Yeah. <laughs> I know someone that I think did a, I can't tell if they did the perk test on your property that you bought, or was it the the Wheaton one to the right of it? The Wheaton one. I did a perk test on our property. They got perked. Yeah. Because I know, I know, I think one of those properties didn't perk. Yeah, so I Wheaton one. With, the Wheaton one didn't? Across from my house, I'm at 23. Okay, all right. All right. It didn't perk anywhere. All right. <laughs> yeah, it just crossed my mind. I, I, I was talking to someone that they were in that day, they were doing the perk. And they said it didn't perk, but uh, I'm slightly off topic, but thank you. <laughs> what were your original intentions with the property? It was going to be the one lot, no, just hold on to number four, mm -hmm. and then sell where one and two lot, there's going to be two duplex lots because we assumed there's no commercial, mm -hmm. and then Lot three, we we're going to hold, it's going to be five and a half acres, and we're going to try to propose a, 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 a small housing apartment or condo complex. Builds commercial, but the, it's, the opportunity is endless. It is. You know, and, it's that's great why, and that's why we bought it. You know, we, we own a couple other builds commercial properties, and that's why we bought it. I would have never, ever bought this property if it was residential. One of the, so are you representing? No. No, 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 no not tonight. No, 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 no. But I do have an observation. I'll open up the job. Are you really guys going to have your discussion so that we can all jump in or not? We're going to ask questions. We're going to ask questions. We'll and then we will open up the public. So, so everyone will get a chance to ask any questions. We're not excluding anybody. 
I mean, no, I know that. I just would like you to finish your discussion so we have a chance to jump in there. Well, it's we, not going to happen. We're, 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 we're comfortable. It, it is our meeting, so we were on meeting. That's right. <laughs> so we want to get the right place. Yeah. Some of the stuff you're talking about is wrong anyways, but that's okay. <sighs> uh, but I will, I will uh, take a question to Susan. It's not a question. It's an observation. I think the members of the board know that I'm more than uh, a casual observer of zoning issues in Morton. And I do have to say that I recently, in connection with a totally unassociated project, I had occasion to go online and download a copy of the colored zoning map that the town of Morton put up online. And when I learned of this application, I took a look at what was on the map and what the town had posted on the, the town map was the same thing that apparently uh, uh, Mr. Iafredi uh, and Mr. Rivero saw posted on the wall in the town hall. It, 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 it was up there. Anybody consulting that map, myself included, would be led to believe that we could rely on what is available online at the town website. And that was wrong and had been wrong for some time, and yet nobody corrected that either. I, I think that, you know, with, with respect to any of the neighbors or whatever, I, I think that Mr. Rivero and his brother are entitled to a great deal of consideration from the town because if it were not, I, I, it, it sounds like he used the utmost due diligence before purchasing this property. And it is entirely the poor records keeping, if you want to call it that, of the town that has led to a monumental uh, financial catastrophe for him. And what he's proposing to you is probably uh, a, a single estate lot. I, uh, that's probably the least invasive thing that he could possibly propose to you. And that's my two cents for the first time. Thank you. Can we any more thoughts, questions, or a little bit to the public? When, when did you purchase this property? November 21st, 23rd of last year. So did you use the online map at all when you did that, or just the map that was posted? Uh, the engineer used the online map. OK, Mr. Souza, he is my attorney. He's not representing me now, but he used it. And I used it not the online. I used the high copy with that. I'm not an online guy. I like to go with the map source. that he's referencing. Did, can you agree that it was all highlighted to what he's? I have a picture. Yeah, I have. I still have a copy folded in my office because the second it came up, we tried to fix it. And was Twenty Two Reservoir Street part of that highlight? If you don't mind showing us.
Yeah, you will get a chance, I promise. Well, you're beating a dead horse up there, that's all. Well, we're not beating a dead horse. No, well, that I, I, I'm trying to, you know, this is our right. meeting. It's, Sir, it's, it's, our it's, meeting. Please be respectful. And if we take long and we need to, the goal is to come to the right. I would ask you to submit that uh, with the application as well. Though. When you have a chance, you can keep that copy since it's yours. Thank you. I'm a former member of the planning board and the board of assessors. Um, I wanted to ask if any of you were either attended or listened in on the planning board meeting that occurred this past Thursday for Zero Reservoir Street. No. No. Zero Reservoir Street is an R60 property. There's a, an article. Well, hold on. That property. has nothing to do with the property that we're talking about. We're not about. talking about that property. We're not talking about Zero. Didn't you just, someone just stated that it was Village Commercial. One of you just said that it was no, a Village Commercial. No, the property, property that he's talking about, 79 Mansfield Ave, is Village Commercial. Commercial. Okay. One of you just stated, and I believe it was you, that Zero Reservoir Street was also Village Commercial. Is you know what? No, Zero Mansfield Ave, which is further down, was just another property that I was talking about how the entire property was highlighted as Village Commercial. Yes, Zero okay. Mansfield Ave. I did so there's that. a zoning map online that's from 2019 that I believe does show this property that we're talking about as being village commercial. But the 2020 map, the revised, the latest map, um, doesn't show uh, 22 Reservoir Street as being village commercial. It's R60. And part of the reason the planning board didn't endorse the petition to rezone Zero Reservoir Street to Village Commercial is because the property that surrounded it on all sides except the back was Village Commercial, was on R60. So we're not talking about Zero Mansfield so that. We're, I was talking about Zero Mansfield, so not Zero Reservoir So maybe I misheard you. I thought yes. that you had said Reservoir Street. Um, I would like to understand better why, I'm sorry, why, um, the variance is even required. I'm not quite understanding. So how much frontage does that this property have on Reservoir Street already? Does it have less than 150 feet of frontage? Yes. It's approximately uh, 64 feet. You can read that. And 96 inches? Yeah, 64 That's the feet. only? So what are we looking at? So, no, I'm not the, sure what the property it, is. The, the, the property as a whole has 364 feet of frontage. So ba based off of the current zoning, which is R60, he, he has two, two, um, two conforming lots, and he's looking to get a variance on a third lot because he only has 64 feet of frontage remaining for a third lot, which he showed on the back, on the left side of that plan. And that lot is to build on? To put uh, a driveway uh, in? I'm not yeah. sure what it's yes, going to be. It would be a buildable house lot. So there's, there'll be three driveways? Yes. And that, these are not all houses. These are, or, I, I mean, I know these are our 60s. But so they are three houses. Um, yeah, the residential It's houses. for a um, condominium. There's no condos. Just I, I believe the applicant said four house lots now. Right? Yeah, four individual house lots. Nate, 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 Nate Field Ave. This is one. There's a there's a house on it right now. And then this is on Reservoir Street. One house lot, two house lot, three. And this is the one we're talking about today, with 64 feet of frontage. So with this variance, the most you can develop is. Well, I'm just asking for this one house because when I got my letter saying it was commercial, I was legally able to do this already, but it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to get this one back. Okay. It's just one, so two, three. So you are looking to work with the zoning as it As R60. Is. Yeah, just mm -hmm. build three houses. Just three houses. One with a narrow frontage. Yeah. 
one with a narrow frontage and a big and a big yeah. and then we we talked to Dow, which is right here, it has to be back at his house. Was did they submit a letter for the board's consideration? Yeah. Yeah, they were in favor of it just because mm -hmm. of how how this transpired. Like I said, we wouldn't have bought this if we oh, for that right feel for you. It's created all kinds of oh, issues. It's just it got all, all of us on reservoir. Um <laughs> it's just a very I mean, the grove is already a very densely developed neighborhood and we have a lot of different houses. We have a diversity of population. We have the trash and traffic for those cars, using it as a shortcut from 140 to 123. Um, the constraints on the north side of the street because of Xfinity events half for the year. Sure. This is another constraint. Um, I don't have a problem with people anyone developing it according to how it is zoned. Um, my concern was that they were going to try to squeeze every bit out of a out of lots that are in the water resource protection district and they're there for a reason. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I fully understood what it was sure. that was being proposed. Thank you. Uh, Paul Krogan, 27 Reservoir Street. And what I'm getting out of this is what you guys are asking for are three lots, three houses. Correct. Yeah. Which I spoke with these guys earlier, and that's what they told me. Uh, I didn't have any idea. I talked to my neighbors. They told me about the problem that they had about the zoning. Um, three houses, I think, can handle it. But the problem that I have is if they're given, if if they're giving this variance for this extra lot and this right away for this driveway to get to this lot. Can they change it to village commercial after we give it to them? Any questions? I would say no. Okay, you go on the record as saying that? I mean they well, not, they, well yeah. I mean I'm I'm not we can't speak for comment I I help Clients uh, rezone in the area of the community, and number one to rezone a particular lot to be spot zoning, which is illegal. Number two, if you were going to select a whole area, I do, number I, of lots. I, I, I do understand that, yeah. So, uh, but, but what the thing I'm is, saying the, is the, the, the whole street will be village commercial if we give that to them. Okay. And we'll be fighting. And we'll be now. fighting this again in another five years, yeah. like we did yeah. five years ago. But Paul, the okay. whole if, town if, has to vote if, for it. If they five five years ago. Yeah, we we I, fought. I, I understand. So what I'm saying to you is, you know, uh, 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 is is that a possibility? And are you gonna, are you going to give them the bills commercial so they can put apartments and whatever? <laughs> now, sorry, I, I, sorry, can I? I don't think. I uh, recuse myself. Yeah, no, from, I, what you're I recuse myself from the matter, but it's not up to the zoning board to rezone. It's up to. Tell I'm us. asking if that's a possibility. It's not up to us. It's I didn't us. ask. I didn't ask if you were going to do it. I asked if, if is that a possibility of something that they could do. Well, no, I think well. Mr. Sousa explained rezoning is a process that goes through. I know through. what the, I, I know the process. They have to go through a process to then get it, correct? Please so don't you, ask us to commit to, to not rezone because we don't have that power. I'm the chair of the board. That's why I'm speaking okay, so, up. So I guess it's we'll, just we'll, not us who makes so I guess decision. what I'll have to do is I'll just have to ask them. No. Right. But, but you can't. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Stop. Yeah, don't, stop. Don't, don't, don't yell at me, buddy. Okay? Do me a favor. Don't yell at me. Listen. Okay? I'm going to ask you, me. I'm just okay. asking a question to these gentlemen. Right, That's but you're okay. supposed to address us as the board, not the applicant. I, I am addressing you, but no, you, you, can't, you can't answer me. And I'm, I'm not going to answer you, okay? Do you want me to say that? I won't commit to that. Okay. Okay. Good. Then next question. Next yeah. question. I can address it. Well, through the board. Through the board. Through the board. They have no intentions at all of doing that. Okay. And that's, and that's all I wanted to hear from these guys. They need to hear from you. Yep. Don't shake your head at me. 
You can leave. Sir, please. you can leave. Please, please leave. leave. You know, you have to understand that we're, we're just protecting. We live across the street from it. You don't. No, no, no. You have to speak. Okay. Everybody okay. has to speak. Okay. Have respect. I'm asking, I'm asking a question. I'm not yelling at anybody. Okay. The other gentleman that started yelling at me. Okay. Because you were yelling at the applicant. No, I wasn't yelling at him. Was I yelling or was I asking you a question? Yes, sir. It's over. Oh, okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. They can answer for themselves when you say something. Yeah, I just want to clarify these, uh, these maps. Okay. Greg Vincent, 23 Reservoir Street. Concerning these, the maps and the maps that the town has, um, they've been wrong for many, many, many years. And I started to give you the whole story. And getting the maps, the federal, I mean the, the state mandatory north to give me when it was turned village, I mean when it was turned commercial. And it turns out that in 1978, the town blanket mapped on Route 140, 123, ranging from 350 feet in to 450 feet in as commercial. That's why when, uh, I'll skip the whole other end of Reservoir Street, but when you guys, I, you know, I, I went through a Tabitha, I forget her name, was not helpful at all. And then I went with a Rebecca who was very helpful. And I got her to recognize the maps that I had from 1978, which showed split zoning all the way up 140. And that's the way it is today. It's split zone. Even from your 2019 marijuana overlay, it shows that property split zone. What I'm telling it, you, it never ever. What I'm telling was you, was commercial. That's all. What I'm and telling you, Paul. Is, Paul knows this. That property was half village commercial, half R16, and the town made a mistake. And they are fleeing for hardship, which they have the absolute right to do, because that property should be 100% village okay. commercial, well, just can, like Zero Mansfield Ave. Can I? Can I claim? Can as a residence of the first 11 houses on Reservoir Street claim a hardship too, for the wheat property you across the way? You can put an application. In. I mean, we did our due diligence before I had my house built in 2000. I went to town hall. I had, went to ask, I want to find out who owns the property across the street. They said, oh, you need to go upstairs, talk to the assessors. I talked to the assessors. She came out and we went through the maps and we found the property and then she looked it up. And she says, oh, it's owned by wheat property and it's owned our, our, our 40. Which is great. Went and bought the property. Not much me, the state trooper next door to me, the other guy. Is this a, you know, anything that's relevant to but this, this I'm saying the town no. misled all us property owners that that was residential across the street, not commercial, which then later on got changed to village commercial. But regarding this specific matter, we're telling you that there was a mistake by, made by the town, and the applicant is here with a hardship claim that we're considering. Okay. That's it. All right, so we're going to wait to see what the plans are for the property across the street, and then you may have 15 people doing filing hardship claims on Reservoir Street. All right. Thank you. Cheryl Singh, 169 Reservoir Street. Um, I have a request, and that's that this the abutters letter be read into the record. And um, I truly believe that number 22 Reservoir Street, that particular parcel in its entirety, was our sixty. And I, I, I don't the, the zone, the split zoning is 79 Mansfield. It doesn't even touch 22 Reservoir Street. All the, that 12, 79 Mansfield Avenue abuts 22 Reservoir, the and none of it is the applicant to clarify uh, for you as a map that was posted in the town, which is an official document, mm -hmm. with 22 Reservoir highlighted as village commercial. And this is the hardship claim they're making to us, which is valid. I have no problem with the hardship claim. What I do is have an issue with saying it should always have been village commercial when nothing is no property. Seventy-nine Mansfield should have been village commercial in its entirety. Yes. And twenty-two Reservoir Street is R60, like every other lot on Reservoir Street. That's the clarification I'm trying to make, and I would like to have the abutters letter read to the record. Thank you. I 
that you should have got your letters and have more than 300 feet of the property. All right, so right, at this point, I think we're going to close the, the public meeting portion of this. So you don't have a letter to read into the record? For, for what? Uh, the budget yeah. seat bag. Yeah. And and you said you had a letter. Oh, uh, yeah, it's in the system. But it's I in the system, it's been filed. That's the matter. So I made the request. If you deny the request, you have to state something. Sorry. You, you, you're referring to the letter from Mr. and Mrs. Daryl Simpson? Yeah. 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 Well, I'd like it right into the record. Uh, I want to write it, but we'll read it. We'll read it. So you guys want to read it? You want to read it? No, we'll read it. There's only one of the appeal members. We are writing to you on behalf of Dylan and Sean Farrell and they request for a frontage bearing on the hearing of their hardship that was created solely by the town of Norton. We are in favor of renting them a frontage bearing. Sincerely, Mr. and Mrs. Carroll Simpson. Thank you, the President. So, my concern, but I, I'm totally sympathetic in this situation. My only concern is we have the authority, because we've this before, like in the, uh, the property, the church property. Down because by doing that, we, they, were, they, were, they were creating a self inflicted hardship. Uh, and, and, and while and I think we have the same, I think we have the same situation here. But I think that if we were going by Map Geo, I think we would be going back to the applicant to say that he should be asking for hardship. Regarding 79 Mansfield that only because there's a big mistake there, and that 22 Brothers of Lord Street should have remained as our 60, as evidenced by what we see online. But based on the posted document in the town hall and the building commissioner also verifying that that was posted in the town hall, and as you remember, that's how you used to check your documents by posted maps. I believe that we do have the claim for hardship that 22 Reservoir was highlighted as built commercial and they bought the property to develop it with what they proposed. I actually agree with them by the map that they, they provided to us. And by basically the building commissioner being a, a witness to say that that was supposed to be. I do believe in the hardship. And I would be frank with their expert. That's my position. If, if we were going by this, I think it's a different situation, and I think the applicant would have different options and maybe talk, ask for all 79 to be those commercial, and I think he could actually go after that and develop a lot more. I think the fact that he's developing more individual house lots, <coughs> I, think it's, um, I don't think it's any more detrimental to the neighborhood, and I think that by the map that we were presented, I would agree with that too. Uh, I think at this point, the, the the map that was posted in town, you know, with the clear picture, I mean, sorry, if I didn't see it, I mean, in the bill, I think it's a it's a town mess up. And it's not, I think I think the hardship is accurate. And respectfully, I, you know, we also understand that Mr. Rivero, you know. Is a business owner in town. Is in the town hall. Has has been has been looking at maps for a long time. I think that you know this is an experienced person. And if he if he saw this situation, he may have not purchased the property, but he looked at a map that and he made he made a commitment financially to buy that property based on a an inaccurate map. And I think that that's unfair. And I think the hardship plea is uh, valid. So can we give a variance based on a, simply on a, a hardship? That is more of uh, the requirements, correct? It is, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I mean, we have to determine the hardship as well. Right. Jim, the, the 
variance is just on the front. It's not on the zone. Right. It's yeah, on the zone. Right. Yeah, it's just on the front. Right. Exactly. It's just on the front. Yeah. Right. 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 It's just on the left. I'm sorry? That's lot 86. Lot 22. No. No. I will look up the record after the meeting of yourself and you can verify the town hall. Your thingy here says it's map number 16, lot 86. That is not 22. This is lot 86, the thing is broken. This is 22, the other thing is broken. The variance is coming off because of the way the horseshoe is around. Yeah, so that's 22, right? Which is lot 88, not 86. Okay, so it's it's 22 reservoir, it's according to the map, and it, the way is, we it, it is what it is. Yes. Is there um, initial well, saying, you, you misidentifying the tax assessors? Well, I'm not sure what we're discussing here. Well, this, this is what I received in the mail. Okay? Yep. This is my notice by page. Okay. It's being butter. And it says map 16, lot number 86. I look up map. So it sounds like you, 86. Sir, you have grounds to appeal. If you'd like to appeal the decision, you have grounds oh, to appeal. I'm not going to appeal this decision. I'm well, fine with the decision. Okay. I just want the town to get their damn map squared away. That would be nice. Because they've met, messed Thank up you, a sir. lot of people. Thank you, sir. As do we. We're going to go we. on to the next item of business. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So it was misidentified in the notice. Let's take note of that. Let's not let that be. I have no idea. Oh, if it was misidentified in the notice, the abutter has a uh, right to appeal. This has gone far afield. Let's get on with the business of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Souza, for assisting, trying to assist anybody. <laughs> I, I, we don't have the power to do this. Just a quick comment that, that Brian knows because he and I have trouble. And we have comments about downloading stuff. There's problems with the upload too. Well, uh, I mean, actually, Henry, there's a separate thing oh, on Dropbox. It's on this is a town site. Yeah. But it's not permanent. It's, so I'm sorry. It's not permanent. It's a different you know, oh, thing okay. altogether. So uh, it might be just harder to find. I have a real it's problem. It's time for me to retire. <laughs> you know, I have a real problem hearing what I've heard about there being maps in town hall and online that are not synced up. I have a real problem yeah, with that. That's, that's that problem. ticks me that's off. Problem. That's a big Mr. Problem. I afraid Abe's put in an uncomfortable position. They were bureaus. Uh, I was not involved in the decision, but uh, when I read it, I couldn't believe what I was reading. That, that, that should not happen in what this they are, What they showed for that map and what I was showing them on actually two entire properties highlighted on that map that are not on map geo yeah two entire properties it, 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 
town hall is going to do uh, better. I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk to town manager about it. This cannot happen in, in this in town. Fairness, in fairness, Rivera, he could have gone after 79 Mansfield to all be village commercial. He could, have, he could have built an apartment complex there if he wanted. To I don't know if he could by by lawsuit uh, change the zoning determination, but I mean a uh, zoning uh, zone by lawsuit. I don't know if that's possible. But he was certainly in a bad position. Absolutely. I, yeah. Hundred percent. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just that outraged that the maps in town hall are not synced up with the proper map. I would just observe that unless I have overlooked the change in the zoning bylaw, that I mean, been doing this for 41 years. I have <laughs> the largest collection of the zoning bylaw. I've got more than the library has, but. The zoning bylaw has always said that the town clerk is the keeper of the official map and has the responsibility of always keeping it up to date. And back in the day, when someone wanted to do a project, I would go and visit with. And that's what I was referencing. The I, yeah, I would, map go, was I would go and off. see Diane Cassani or Jill Claude Cascon mm -hmm. Clerks. I would say I want to buy an updated copy of the zoning bylaw, and I want you to certify right. these sections with your seal, right? Because town clerk was the keeper of the official zoning map and zoning regulations, and somewhere in our technological society, we've wound up with a little bit of a disconnect from that, and it's. I guess it's no one's fault and it's everyone's fault. It's, it's, we we want to make everything more accessible and easier for people to access without the necessity of physically going to the town hall. But there has to be accountability and making Absolutely. sure that the I don't, I don't disagree. Yeah. I don't disagree. No, we're on the same page but, here. I, but we're, I, I just, just think that I just uh, read. That, the the technology know, lags. Technology always lags. And, you know, just being an old duffer, you know, used to the old ways. You know, so, sometimes, sometimes the old ways, just to me, seem a little bit easier. Well, thank you for your assistance for the last step. I, I'm sorry to steal the show and pontificate here tonight. <laughs> you know, this is just a, a subject that I deal with all the time. Thank you. Thank good you. night. Have a good night. Um, I'm going to continue on with the. I think this is a real problem. Um, he's my across the street neighbor, so even though the property isn't in my, you know, neighborhood, obviously, um, I didn't want it to appear, and I know that all these other people would be involved in it either. But I'm glad I, was, you know, I'm glad I stepped away. But uh, I can't believe the problem. Make sure it's updated. But when I looked at when I looked at that overall section that he showed us, everything else did seem correct. It's just those some. I don't know, so I took a highlight or just kept going. <laughs> it's not the only parcel in town that was on that map that's wrong. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah. Well, there must be one official map that was adopted. So it's all going to be done over to conform to whatever town hall, I mean, town meeting adopted, right? You know, it did drive. I was actually looking at these maps last time at the it's kind of on the economic planning department. There's two different maps. There's two maps. So they actually have the 2019 and they have the 2020. Mm -hmm. and, and to make it worse, like the 2019 is on the very bottom. So if somebody was reading from the bottom, you're looking for a zoning map, right? You go right there and click on that map. And that would be the problem. That was the old map. It doesn't say parentheses old or anything like that. Yeah. So unless you read well, up and then you see updated 2020. Yeah, and then the problem is, is when we when we did this, every single paper map that's hung on the wall in the town hall showed the zoning determination that I had wrote. 2019. Okay, well thank you for helping to bring it to our attention here. You know, you know, that way, I don't, I'm not sure what we can do about it except tell the town manager this can't, it can't happen like that. So thank you, Mr. I really appreciate it. Yeah. There, was a, there was a time, was it one year ago or two years ago, the online bylaws did not match up. I did because I spent a few hours before one of our meetings, I think it was two years ago. Yeah. You, I and I did some research, and then I 
Paul said, oh, that, that's not the right bylaw. And I yeah. said, what do you mean? Oh, when the new one came out. It was yeah. online? Yes, yes. But it had been adopted six months prior and still are online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the same thing. Yeah. Okay. My printed so copy was the, yeah. Yep. You remember the issue, and I'm forgetting what the exact issue was. It was something like a cell tower, too. It was, might have been that. Might have been that, that uh, application. One? Yeah. The last application a few years ago. But in any event, that can't happen. Let's move on. Uh, business, uh, the minutes uh, of uh, January were distributed. I had made just a few uh, minor edits and uh, uh, asked uh, Brian to, uh, sorry? Yeah. So is there a- I looked at it, I had no problems with that five or two. And I think we had talked last time about transitioning to allow uh, uh, our Assistant slash clerk slash boss <laughs> slash everything else. Gatekeeper. Uh, do do the meeting minutes and uh, present them to us. Uh, whether you want to continue having a formal vote on each minutes, uh, you know that's what we've done. But it uh, doesn't have to be that way. Uh, but I'm fine with the January minutes. Do you do you want to continue taking a vote on minutes? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just think that, that accuracy, yeah. Sure. accuracy in a, a, a matter like this comes up, well, you want to be able to. Uh, these minutes will be interesting. Right? Oh, yeah. These will be 40 pages long. <laughs> but in any event. I want to include the part where no one online can hear us. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was bad too. Is there a motion uh, for the January January minutes? Uh, right? It would be January. January minutes. I make a motion to approve the January minutes. I'll second. Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Tavares, yes. Mr. Noel, and Lucas. You can join us. Um, that was all I had. Uh, oh, wait, February minutes. You didn't uh, show me that. You said you were going to work on them. Did you send those to us? I just missed that then. I didn't see it in February. I was all I said. I just had 19. There's only one set. I'd be, I was just going by the email where the agenda was sent to us like a week ago. Yeah, yeah. it was only one set. Uh, maybe I misheard you sent it separately. In any event, yeah. I didn't I did look those over. Let's just see if you can <laughs> get it to us uh, for next time. What is that sound I'm hearing? I think that's the select board. The, the what? Select board. Because they have cross wires here. <laughs> Yeah, so we can hear a select board sometimes. You mean somebody is in that room so we can hear them talking? Yeah. Are they meeting right now? Yeah. Yes. At the library. So they're, they're having to. Why didn't we hear them until now? Okay, can we get back to uh, in person? Uh, see if we can get back to in person meeting uh, next time. This has been quite a I was not right. Right. Well, it has worked. I mean, it's been okay. Not at first. I mean, especially the first one they did. They were great. All right. Well, let's go, man. Right. Is there anything else right now? I don't feel so bad. Okay. Thanks for. I don't know what was going on there, though. I mean, what? I couldn't understand what the other people were even trying to say, for or against, or they were just complaining yeah, about these issues. I think they're all so in town. Huh? They're all so in town. It not matter to me. I don't think that they knew what the documents were, so they didn't know what the development of use was going to be, so they came in there thinking it was going to be some big apartment. Like you said, I didn't know okay. it was a full lot. So I think they yeah. came in with a negative. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go. That's what I mean. We're still talking. We're discussing general business. I'm going to bring it to the attention of town manager and some of the problems we've had today. And uh, see if anything can be done. We're going to check on the only in person comes down as long as we advertise it and publish it. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. At 9 10, Mr. Tamari? Yes. Mr. Wren? Yes. Mr. Wozniak? Yes. Mr. Wren? Yes. Thank you.